Hi. My go-to strategy for measuring temperature from a Pico has been to use the DS18B20, a strategy I learned from working with the Raspberry Pi. Some of the boards I'm working on right now make uh, using these sensors impossible, so I've had to do a wider review of options for measuring temperature. In this video, I look at four approaches to measuring temperature, including my traditional DS18B20. I've published the code for each example too. I hope you might find that useful when you're selecting a temperature sensor too. Please do like the video and subscribe. I do appreciate it. So the problem here is that I just need to measure the temperature of a room, an environment that I'm in, and to do that on a Pico W. So it will be able to actually communicate the temperature out as well as displaying it locally on uh, some display. My go-to for these sorts of problems has always been the DS18B20 since I got introduced to the one wire um, temperature sensor via the Raspberry Pi because it was the easiest way to add an external temperature sensor to a Raspberry Pi. That of course can happily talk to a Pico or a Pico W and the device I am going to connect this to is absolutely a Pico W. Unfortunately, um, it's actually attached to a bigger board. It's on either the Badger 2040W from Pimeroni or the Unicorn Galactica from Pimeroni, both of which I'm looking to provide um, temperature sensors in my house from. Both of those boards actually limit the interfacing I can do to the Pico W. So they really only expose a um, quick st uh, or stem QT um, interface, which is basically I2C. So that discounts me really being able to use that one wire protocol uh, approach to temperature monitoring. So a quick or stem QT port is really just a JST SH4 pin plug that sits on there. It's got level shifting for different voltages, so you shouldn't have to worry about voltage connections around it. That's the idea of this standard. But at the heart of it, and from a Pico W point of view and Pico W boards, it's basically just I2C working at 3.3 volts. So it's got I2, the two I2C channels on there and power. So as you can see there from the ports, it's ground, positive voltage, SDA and SCL. So I can connect up any device to that, that's easy enough, but I've got to find something that's actually going to provide the uh, temperature centering I want. So in this video, I'm gonna look at some of the options around the Pico for temperature sensing. We probably should talk about internal temperature sensing because there is a temperature sensor actually on the RP2040 chip. So we'll look at that briefly. Then of course my preferred option of the DS18B20, which unfortunately I can't use for my project I'm targeting at, but I can at least talk about it and show you the code for that. And then my other two options. Um, so I've used the DS3231 before for temperature sensing. You might think, what? Why? That's a real-time clock. Um, yep, it, it is. But it also has a temperature sensor on. Yes, it's limited to the degree of accuracy. It's only um, down to a quarter of a degree Celsius, but it's still quite good for display purposes. And finally, um, more the sort of gold standard for temperature sensing, an AHT10. So as always, all the code for today is going to be on GitHub. Um, you can go download it, play with it, see it. Um, but it is all only just example code today. This video is sponsored by Cancun. Cancun is a friendly retailer in the UK for modules, components and electrical equipment. Cancun has kindly offered a discount to my channel viewers on the first order. Just quote Dr. John EA 20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. This excludes electrical test equipment and tools. If you're in the UK, go and check out Cancun today. The Pico and Pico W both have internal temperature sensors 
Actually, these are part of the RP2040, so it's actually on that processor. And so every um, RP2040 board you can buy will have temperature sensing on board. This is basically just as the MESTA, and it's read via the ADT, the Analog to Digital Converter. So you need to read it, do a voltage conversion so that you know what voltage you've read across that thermistor, and then convert that into the temperature. Over in the code repo here and the project, I've got a main uh, structure here under source, which is actually going to uh, demonstrate each of the four options for temperature sensing. But to talk through them, I've actually written some test cases using CPP U-Test. Um, I did a, a video on that recently, you may remember. So we can just look at the test case and that will show us all we need to know about each of these options. So starting with the internal test option. Well, the internal tests really are, and the internal temperature sensor is basically using hardware ADC. Um, uh, and log to digital conversion. So uh, to test it, and we are just going to run a sanity test, we're going to initialize the ADC system, we're going to enable the uh, temperature sensor, and um, then we're going to select the ADC input to be input 4, which is the temperature sensor. Remember a Pico actually only has one ADC unit, it's just got four options of where to take the source from or five options really, where to say the fourth for our option, um, the value from. So um, then we're going to read the voltage and I've got some conversion there that just working out what that voltage is. And then we're gonna convert that voltage into a temperature in Celsius and print that temperature out. And I'll do some sanity checking to just make sure it's in within a normal range for my room temperature. So let's look at a demo of the values coming off of the internal um, sensor. Now I'm reading these every second and just printing out the value. The problem I find with the internal sensor is that you need to do some filtering on the values coming through. Though the readings are not necessarily bad, um, we are getting some odd readings coming through and indeed what I'm reading is actually low compared with the room temperature, though we can of course tune this by tuning that algorithm of how that is converted from the voltage that we're reading. The DS18B20 sensors come in either a TO92 package or a waterproof probe package, which is great for my projects. The connections to this are ground and then 3.3 volts, within the middle pin being the data pin. This needs to be pulled up to 3.3 volts using a 4.7K resistor. The one wire protocol that this uses for reading is actually quite slow. Um, indeed, centering the temperature is quite slow too. So this could slow down your Pico Co quite a lot. Fortunately, there's an opportunity here to actually put all of that code for managing the one wire protocol into PIO. And that's the approach I tend to go with. So I've got my own library that I use for this, but that was actually developed based on work by Harry Fairhead in his article on the uh, Pico C and how to actually write PIO programs for reading one wire. So that's, that's a great uh, article to go read. So for the um, DS18B20, I'm using my own library, which um, uses PIO. So again, we've got a sanity test for this. So I am going to create our object, our object for the DS18B20, and I'm going to tell it that it's going to use PIO0, and so of the bank of PIO, uh, eight PIO uh, units we have on the Pico, I'm going to use a, a zero, and that we're using GPIO pin 18. Um, the way that this works is that you need to run the convert utility uh, function to go and uh, do a sample and get that sample ready so that you've got temperature, and then the DS um, get temperature function to actually retrieve the temperature. Um, there needs to be about a second between the two. Um, uh, but the processor can go and do whatever you need in between. It's just there needs to be a bit of a conversion um, time in between why it does that sampling and brings that data out. Remember, one wire protocol is actually really quite slow. 
but then temperatures actually don't change very quickly so that's not really that big of a problem and if we can use the PIO so we're not interrupting the processor that's good. Um, again we're going to check the temperature um, uh, is in normal range for um, my room. The DS18B20 is producing a nice stable temperature and an accurate temperature that we're reading here every one second. The DS32 Day 1 is a real-time clock and the real-time clock uses a temperature sensor on board to maintain the accuracy by knowing the temperature and therefore knowing how the oscillator on board is being altered by temperature it can maintain a very accurate um, clock. The DS3231 is a 3.3 volt device that communicates via I2C. It also has an alarm interrupt but that's not something that we need to worry about for a um, temperature sensing um, project. I've used this chip before and this module before on my real-time clock experiments and we've got a video on it so you can go and have a look at that if you're interested. And I've got my own little library that's been adapted from the work of Victor Constin's library to actually read this. The reason I adapted that is I wanted to increase the accuracy. He was just pulling back the temperature as a integer value and I wanted to include the additional um, quarter of a degree that this uh, sensor can actually read. So the DS3231 um, test, um, this is really, um, again, we're using a library, so we're just importing the DS3231, uh, and this is, um, and then I'm going to uh, tell it which I2C um, channel we're using, and we're on I2C0 in this example, and which pins I've create, connected I2C2, which is 20 and 21. Uh, with that set up, I can actually just go and, and get things like the date string, temperature, and temperature is float, and I can pull all those back from the unit, and then uh, do some checks to check that temperature is in normal room temperature. So we're also getting a nice stable read of temperature from this sensor. Um, obviously the accuracy is limited, we're only going down to the quarter of a degree Celsius, um, which I guess helps the accuracy a little bit because you've got to go quite a way for it to change. The AHT10 is the gold standard of the options I'm looking at here. It's a temperature and humidity sensor. And because it's dedicated to those tasks, it's not surprising that it actually does that very well. Once again, it can be connected as a 3.3 volt device that communicates over I2C and reads temperature and humidity. I'm using Galvin Lyons library to um, work with this. He's written one for all of the AHT um, series of chips, but we're using it here for the AHT10. And the um, AHT10, I'm using the AHT XX library. So I've included the header file from that up there. And we're going to create that um, library. We're telling it which um, address are on I2C AHT10 is responding to, and it's on 38. I'm telling it that it's on I2C0, which is the I2C I'm using, and it's the same one that I'm using for that real-time clock. They're both actually just connected in parallel on the same bus. Um, and we're using, uh, therefore, ports uh, or GPIO channels 20 and 21. Um, so then we can initialize it, and then, uh, once we've got a little bit of a wait here just to check to see if uh, everything is okay and we're uh, we've connected okay and then we can read the temperature and check the temperature is in range so nice um, easy use of that library so we're getting a very nice stable temperature read here from the AHT10 actually this is just variance in, in terms of about a hundredth of a degree Celsius which um, is pretty good, I think, uh, and a really nice um, module to use. Here I'm running all four options in parallel, and you can see the um, variance um, between them. Um, they all are doing their job quite well. Obviously, you know, the AHT10 is um, by far the um, most stable and most accurate, and it's probably one I'm leaning to towards for my project, I think. 
The AHT10 looks like it's going to be a really good option for me. I'll publish some of my example projects as I build them here, of course. As an Englishman, I'm of course obsessed with the weather. So perhaps this will build into a Pico powered weather station too. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it. And please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.